let's see if we can figure out um, plexiglass. So first of all, plexiglass uh, registered. All right, so you don't want to get in trouble. It's a trademark. <clears throat> Um, what's it, what's plexiglass used for? <clears throat> so plexiglass is used for um, windows, um, not most windows, but some windows. Windows uh, where you need fracture resistance. So in a hockey arena, um, they'll often have windows that can, so you have to be able to see through it. But you also don't want the hockey puck to, to shatter the, the, the glass if it was made from conventional soda lime glass. <clears throat> so, you know, we, we, we need it to be, what are the requirements here to make a fracture resistant window? Well, it's got to be optically transparent. I'll explore that in a moment. Uh, and then it also needs to be fracture resistant. So, you know, you, you wouldn't want to use a ceramic because they're susceptible to brittle failure. They don't absorb a lot of energy to fracture. So making it from a polymer makes a bit of sense, making it from a polymer. Um, in fact, um, most eyeglasses that, uh, that people wear, the lenses are made actually from the same chemical, um, <clears throat> the same chem chemical that uh, plexiglass is made from. So let's explore this requirement for optical transparency in a little bit more detail. So what does that mean, optical transparency? Well, light has to go straight through the material. So let's just say this is our, our, um, our window material. OK, there's our window material. And a beam of light comes in. And it might be, uh, might change angle a little bit. You know, we're not going to cover optics. Uh, in this course, but another beam of light comes along and different index of refraction for the material and changes the uh, direction, but it goes straight through. This is a direct path, it's a straight path. So, transparent, by the way, uh, means basically it means you can see through it. See through. Okay, just that term there, see through. Or uh, you know it's it's clear. I mean, it doesn't necessarily mean it's colorless, but it's it's clear as opposed to uh, I'll give you the, the another example. Well, what about um, let's see, uh, what about if we have okay, this is in cross section. Here's a, another window, and this is a bathroom window. Okay, bathroom window, you know, in your, in your shower or something like that. I mean, you don't want people to look in and see you using the bathroom. So it's, it's, it's frosted, isn't it? You've probably seen these frosted glasses and, and I mean, what is, I don't know, I can't really sketch what it would look like if it was frosted, but it's got a kind of a rough appearance on the surface. So what happens is when the light comes in, it, it gets bounced around by all the the rough surfaces uh, on the glass and so it ends up traveling through maybe the both sides are frosted and and it comes so it goes off in a bunch of different directions and it doesn't um, proceed straight through the the glass and so what you see on this side doesn't give you a clear image of what's on the other side and this would be called translucent translucent you can see the light getting through, but there's not a clear image. It's like if you put, um, you know, you were to rub Vaseline on your glasses, you wouldn't be able to see very well. You'd see if it was light or dark, but you wouldn't see clearly. That's translucent, and and finally opaque uh, would be no uh, no light transmitted. The light does not get through. Okay. So what we're after, though, is optical transparency. We want visible light to get straight through. And so it's got to follow a straight path through the material. Now let's look again at our little model of, of what's inside a polymer. And a polymer may be, the molecules may be amorphous. And the polymers also, though, may be crystalline, depending on the nature of the, the MER unit, depending on the, um, you know, whether it's been loaded or not, you have some chain orientation. Um, and so a polymer 
<clears throat> may be uh, semi-crystalline. So it'll have crystalline regions in it, regions where the molecules are organized, and it'll have, or a lot of polymers at least, not all, but a lot of polymers will have these two regions. <clears throat> and so as we've discussed, the crystalline region will have a higher density, such as high density polyethylene, higher density, it's a physical property that's different. Um, it'll have a elevated uh, strength, right? It'll even have a higher elastic constant. And that'll be a topic that I can dive into actually in, in a little bit more detail separately. But it's it's uh, it has have different different properties and uh, versus the amorphous region, which is lower density, lower strength, in fact, lower elastic constant. So without really getting into the mechan or the mechanism for light traveling through these two materials, I don't think it's a big um, stretch of the imagination to. Uh, conclude that there may be a different index of refraction. The light may be um, uh, um, bent through a different angle as it passes through those different materials. When it hits the boundary of this crystalline region versus the amorphous, it may change direction. And in fact, that is the that, that's a really important little statement and result there. So if we now look at our requirements for transparency and we say let's make a window from a polymer, from a semi-crystalline polymer like we have here, well that's going to mean that there's going to be some crystalline domains, there's going to be some uh, or regions, some amorphous regions, some crystalline and some amorphous. And some crystalline over here and and so on and some amorphous and some crystalline very much a cartoon sketch but now if we imagine well what happens when uh, when light passes through well it hits one it hits one uh, boundary there and it uh, changes direction but then perhaps it passes into an amorphous region it goes off in a different direction and then here it goes you know again and it passes the point that they point is it passes through both the crystalline regions and the amorphous and it hits a boundary between the two. It hits these crystal boundaries, which is really a two-dimensional Im imperfection in the in the material. And <clears throat> so that crystalline uh, that boundary causes a change in the direction um, of the light, and so it leads to a translucent polymer at best. So how would you make it uh, transparent? Well, if it's the crystal boundaries that are causing the problem, we'd like to get rid of those. So how could we get rid of the crystal boundaries? Well, you could make uh, a single crystal, the entire thing crystalline, and we're talking about a polymer specifically here, or you could perhaps make it amorphous entirely. Now with a polymer, these molecules that I've been drawing like this are so long that it's just statistically impossible for you to organize an entire sample. So polymers are never completely crystalline. And that's actually an important result to, to keep in mind. Polymers are never, you can never make a polymer 100% crystalline, completely crystalline. But you can make it completely amorphous. So what we want is we want a, a mer chemistry that is going to prevent the molecule from crystallizing. And so, plexiglass is actually polymethyl methacrylate. It's an acrylic. And the mer unit looks like this it's two carbons.
it's got this this large group off the side. And this great big bulky group makes the MER unit kind of complicated and difficult to pack together because to crystallize a polymer you need to have simple structures that can pack together closely like spaghetti. This bulky side group makes the polymer more like fusilli or some some it 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 gives these large groups off the side of the chain that prevent another molecule from getting very close together. So it prevents them from packing and it prevents crystallization. And so that's why plexiglass is optically transparent. One thing I'll just wrap up with is you may have started to get a sense for the fact that this treatment here, this model of molecules as, as chains interacting with the light was a little bit weak. It was kind of at the border of what we could really describe with this model. And absolutely, that's correct. This treatment of optical behavior is, is is limited. This is true about the boundaries between the crystalline and the amorphous regions, but to really dive into optical transparency in more detail and to just, you know, say, explain why a polymer would be transparent when a metal would be shiny and reflective, we need to understand the electrons. We need to have a better model of um, electrons in, in solids and how, <clears throat> how they interact with energy. So that's what we're going to dive into.